Hello and welcome to St. Andrews, where we are a community of faith united by the love of Jesus Christ, building disciples through worship, study, prayer, and service. Let us turn our hearts and minds to worshiping God. Let us pray. O oh Lord, we wait for you, and in your word we place our trust. By the power of your Spirit, set our hearts and minds on the source of life and peace. Speak to us, O oh Lord, through these words that we read this day. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Our first scripture reading comes from the letter to the Philippians, chapter 4, verse, verses 4 through 7. Listen for God's word. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Do not worry about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. And then we turn to the Gospel according to Luke. Chapter 15, verses 1 through 10. Now all the tax collectors and sinners were coming near to listen to Jesus. And the Pharisees and the scribes were grumbling and saying, This fellow welcomes sinners and eats with them. So he told them this parable. Which one of you, having a hundred sheep and losing one of them, does not leave the ninety-nine in the wilderness and go after the one that is lost until he, is, until he finds it? When he has found it, he lays it on his shoulders and rejoices. And when he comes home, he calls together his friends and neighbors, saying to them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep that was lost. Just so, I tell you, there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over ninety-nine righteous persons who need no repentance. Or what woman, having sent ten silver coins, if she loses one of them, does not light a lamp, sweep the house, and search carefully until she finds it. When she has found it, she calls together her friends and neighbors, saying, Rejoice with me, for I have found the coin that I had lost. Just so, I tell you, there is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner who repents. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So in this season, we have ventured through the big emotions as we've sought to honor and understand our emotions as gifts from God. Sadness and grief bring us together and lead us into compassion or suffering with one another. Anger leads us to address injustices around us, leading us to act on our faith. Fear calls us to invest in our faith, not as a way of eliminating our fear, but as a way of deepening our dependent connection with God. So today, today we come to happiness. Now I want to draw a little distinction here between happiness and joy because joy is a state of being or even a way of moving through life. Happiness is the emotion that comes in the moment. Happiness can be the outward expression of an inner state of joy or it may just be a fleeting feeling that comes from outside of ourselves. So when Paul in, the Philipp in Philippians calls upon the church to rejoice in the Lord always, this can be seen as leading people into a joyful state of being. As a follower of Christ, we may have within us a sense of joy at the gifts that God has given us, a sense of joy at the gifts of life and salvation. But happiness happens in the moment. Now just like with fear, there is no place in the New Testament that says that Jesus was happy. So does that mean that Jesus walked around with a scowl on his face the whole time? I don't think so. Jesus must have felt happy as he felt the whole range of human emotions. We might just have to look a little more carefully or read between the lines to find Jesus feeling happiness. Now the two parables that we read of the lost sheep and the lost coin, the characters are happy when they find what is lost. They call out to their friends, rejoice with me for what I have found what I had lost. The woman with the coin uh, calls her neighbors, rejoice with me, join in my happiness and that what was lost is now found. And if she threw a party to express her happiness, she probably spent more than a coin was worth of the party. 
but the point was to bring people into her happiness. Now Jesus is the one telling this parable, so surely he knew what it would be like to feel happiness welling up inside him. After all, how many lost people had he found? That would have brought a feeling of happiness to him. So what does happiness look like to you? Take just a minute and draw in your mind a picture of happiness, what it looks like for you. So in that picture, are you in the company of others or are you alone? What are you doing or seeing? Now the picture that comes to my mind first off is a picture of laughing. Laughing so hard that your cheeks hurt and the muscles in your stomach start to cramp up. That is my go-to image of happiness. That, that outward sign of happiness, laughter. That is what comes to my mind first when I think of happiness. But there are other ways of being happy. Maybe big belly laughs aren't your way of expressing happiness. Maybe a hard-earned smile is the expression of your happiness, or maybe just, just a little twinkle in your eye. In the moment when the woman found the lost coin and the shepherd found the lost sheep, they felt happiness welling up within them. And if we read a little further in this chapter, the next, the next parable is the parable of the lost son, sometimes called the parable of the prodigal son. And in it, the father, upon seeing his lost son walking down the road, he runs to him to put his arms around him. And this is happiness. This is the moment when happiness wells up within him. And I can see Jesus smiling when he tells this part of the parable. For Jesus is looking around him and he's seeing tax collectors and sinners who have gathered around to listen to him. And he's looking at those gathering around him, and Jesus sees God welcoming them home. But sometimes, sometimes happiness isn't easy to find. Sometimes happiness isn't easy to feel. I learned a new word this week, chernophobia. Can you guess what it might mean? It means the irrational fear of being happy. Now, at first glance, this may seem as though someone just wanted to make up a cool-sounding word, but think about it for a moment. Have you ever fe feared being happy? Or felt that, that feeling happy was the wrong thing to feel? Have you ever felt happiness only to wonder when is the next shoe going to drop? Or feared that your happiness might only lead you to disappointment? At a funeral, have you ever caught yourself smiling and wanting to shut that down? At the beginning of this series, we talked about how most times we are feeling more than one thing at a time, but sometimes we, we want to think, okay, sadness is over here and happiness is over here, two opposite ends of a spectrum. If we're sad and we're grieving, we cannot feel happy, and if we're feeling happy, then we cannot at the same, same time feel sadness or grief, and this is simply not true. Anyone who has cried at a wedding or laughed at a funeral reception knows that you can feel happy and sad at the same time, but sometimes we fear being happy. Or we avoid doing things that might bring us happiness because we're afraid something bad might happen. We might fear entering into a relationship or a friendship, even though it might bring us happiness, but because it might also end with us getting hurt. We might not take a job that could make us happy because we're afraid of failing. Yet happiness is a gift from God. Now, throughout these series, as we've explored emotions, we've, we've honored our emotions as gifts from God because each of our emotions is telling us something. Sadness reveals the loss of something and brings us together. Anger tells us something is not right and can lead us to address injustice. Fear tells us that we are not safe and we need to respond to danger or threat. So what does happiness tell us? Psychologist Sonia and I can't pronounce her last name, it's Limborowski, described happiness as the experience of joy, contentment, or positive well-being combined with a sense that one's life is good, meaningful, 
and worthwhile. So the purpose of happiness is to lead us to meaning in our lives, to make our lives meaningful. So think back to the woman who lost the coin and the shepherd who found the lost sheep. They could have just found what was lost and added it to the other coins, stuck the sheep in with the other flock, and gone on with their day. But instead, they celebrated. They felt happy. In the story of the lost son, the elder son asks his father why they have thrown a party for the younger son. And the dad said, we had to celebrate and rejoice. He had to be happy because we have to feel this emotion given to us from God because it brings meaning into our lives. Happiness welling up within us brings us together. Happiness is a gift of God for the community. So this week, when a smile creeps up on your face, or even when you hear yourself groan at a particularly bad joke, thank God for the message of happiness, this emotion that brings us a sense of purpose, a sense of meaning, and a sense that the gift of this life is good. Thanks be to God for the gift of happiness. Amen. Let us pray. Holy and living God, we give you thanks this day for the many ways that you have gifted us with our emotions. We pray, O oh God, that you would hear us as we lift up those uh, joys and concerns that are on our hearts. We pray, O oh God, for those who are suffering this day from chronic illness, those who feel the persistent weight of oppression or abuse, those who are suffering from the ongoing effects of poverty. We cry out with them and our souls are waiting for you, O oh Lord. We raise our voices with those whose hope is lost, those who feel weighed down by the ebb and flow of grief. In despair at the state of the world that you have made, we are exhausted by violence and abuse. And we raise our voices saying, O oh Lord, how long? O oh Lord, will you act? We sit in solidarity with those who are feeling shut off completely. Those who feel mired in the depths of loneliness, relegated to the margins of society, shunned and forgotten by those who should love them. We sit with them, O oh God, and our soul waits for you. You are indeed, O oh Lord, our advocate and our comforter. Through your presence, teach us. Teach us about the depth of our emotions and how they can lead us into greater faith, greater works through you. Enliven our spirits, O Lord, even as we wait for your full redemption. Through Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. Go out into the world in peace. Hold on to what is good. Return no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted, support the weak, honor all people as you love and serve the Lord, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. And may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord be kind and gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen.